as I was sitting there watching Raw and then the next night SmackDown, it took a while for it to dawn on me that SummerSlam was coming up this Sunday. Not in another Sunday. Not in another two Sundays. This Sunday. It feels like they're having it really, really early this year. And then it just feels like the build-up to that show has been bad. Because for the most part, it largely has been, hasn't it? My good lord. And this week's show, you know, there was just a lot of... The couple of eh moments, and then an awesome finish. But let's talk about what we saw on Raw. You know, it's cool in a sense to have Trish out there in a tag match. You'd like, oh, maybe she's going to shake off the ring rust, or maybe you actually want to give people a little bit of an insight to what she has still left to bring to the table, what she can still do in the ring. But doesn't really do much good if she doesn't really see any action in the ring. That said... You know, you've got a team versus another team of women that are in two prominent matches at SummerSlam, and I find myself giving zero Fs about them. Natalia, Becky Lynch, no, nah, I'm good. And as far as Trish versus Charlotte, I have absolutely zero interest in seeing Charlotte go and beat her. I just... It's, it's odd, it's weird, it just doesn't work. Like, Sasha and Trish makes infinitely more sense on a variety of different levels to me. Trish versus Charlotte, we don't need to serve up another person to Charlotte. I'm sorry, I'll pass. I do think one of the real highlights of the show this week, though, was the match with Rey Mysterio and Andrade. This match was really damn good. Like, I think it's sometimes very easy to overlook just how good Rey Mysterio is in the ring especially when it comes to TV matches. Like, some guys can do it, some guys can't. And then you've got Rey Mysterio, who can really, really do it. Like, Rey Mysterio is so good in the ring, in his television matches, that if I had to sit there and fill 15 minutes with a meaningless match and pray that the crowd is going to get into it, I'm going to turn to Rey Mysterio as one of those dudes. Like, this match was really, really good. I could do without the constant attempts to try and pull off the mask, especially if that's not leading to a mask match at SummerSlam or anything like that. Like, that feels a little overdone. But this match, you know, you need things to keep you going throughout a three-hour show. This certainly was one of them. The 24-7 title shtick, eh. A little bit better than last week. It was funny to see Mike pinning his wife at the OBGYN. But then it got right back onto our truth where the hell it belongs. Yeah, you know, that that's cool. I, I can I can work with that. I can jams with that. I can ride with that. But you're getting to the point now where you're gonna have to start winding down this thing pretty soon because it's just gonna produce a diminishing return. And I'm already starting to feel it. And and that's okay. It had its run and it served its purpose. But the purpose is slowly going away. Which is, ironically enough, the exact same thing you could say about Seth Rollins just in general. Like, at least I could say, he did appear on Raw, but they were selling the injuries. It looked kind of ridiculous the way he was, but I will give an A for effort here. At least he didn't come back the next week like absolutely nothing was wrong. At least they actually sold this crap, and they probably had him sell this crap because it was Brock Lesnar that did it, so they're going to actually try and make Brock Lesnar look good here. This is one of these things, again, where I just don't really know that anybody benefits from this. Like, Seth Rollins goes out there, so Beth Ro excuse me, Beth Rollins, <laughs> Brock Lesnar beats him down some more to where Seth Rollins is beaten down, he's already injured, and then cuts this really flat-ass-sounding promo at the end of it all, talking about he's going to beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. He guarantees it. Well, a couple of things. One, if your purpose and aim here was to get me even less invested in behind Seth Rollins to the point where I want Brock Lesnar to win just to sit there and get this shit over with, then WWE, you accomplished your mission. I don't think that was the mission you were trying to accomplish, but maybe it was, but I doubt it. Like, this was bad. And with kind of the way the trajectory of Seth Rollins' character post-WrestleMania, it's been going. Like, this was a perfect segment to crystallize this. 
Instead of him getting respect as a character for going out there even injured and standing up to Brock Lesnar and having people really get behind him, like, could you imagine Daniel Bryan doing that same thing and not having the crowd universally behind him? <laughs> Seth Rollins goes out there, toughs it out, gets his shit pushed in again, and then cuts his really flat-ass sounding promo to where the point of, yeah, if you don't do a heel turn and have somebody help you win, then it's really stupid of you to talk about winning, you guarantee it. Just all of this has been dumb and why gigantic waste of time, which... Ironically enough, is pretty much what it's going to be. Just like the Viking Warriors are one gigantic waste of time. We keep having squash matches. These squash matches aren't even working to really make them get over big. They don't feel special. They don't feel like an attraction. They just are bleh. Bleh, bleh, bleh. And while I surely many of you were disappointed because you did not get much of a Cedric Alexander versus Drew McIntyre match. Bleh, bleh, bleh. You did get the fiend, Bray Wyatt, attacking the hometown guy, the special guest referee, Kurt Angle, and hooking and cinching in the mandible claw until he passed out. Now, this was good. It's nice to see they're running with the mandible claw thing. It is nice to see that. As far as the fiend, Bray Wyatt, you know, the lighting effects are cool. The sound is cool. The mask is cool. The, the way they've done some of this stuff is really cool. I, I would give full and complete credit on that. But now what? You go into SummerSlam, assuming he beats the demon Finn Balor, or even if it's just regular old Finn Balor, then he beats Finn Balor, and then what? Where is the substance to the character? Where is the staying power? Where is the growth potential with this character? I don't know how much there is. He's interesting now, but how long is he going to be interesting Four. I don't know. Whereas I could say with the club, in particular Gallows and Anderson, I don't know if they've ever been particularly entertaining other than that one Southpaw Regional Wrestling show that they did on the network. And you got a tag team match between them and the New Day, which eventually evolves into Ricochet coming out and making the save. Hooray! Six-man tag. Oh, like, yeah, granted, these teams have matches at the pay-per-view. But are the New Day facing off against uh, the club for those top tag team titles? If not, why are they there? Aren't they a SmackDown group? Is that still a thing? Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry. There's just not a lot of passion about this week's show. Like, even the crap wasn't crappy enough to have it really be crapped on. Which brings us to... Roman Reigns and Samoa Joe interrupts to start off the show saying he wants an apology from Samoa or Roman Reigns and by God he's going to get it. And then later on in the night he gets word when he tries to take the show hostage that Roman Reigns is here. So he goes out back and here comes Roman Reigns pulling up. He says, Oos! Let's get it on! And then here comes this car careening towards fucking Roman Reigns. He dives in. You know, where's the continuity here? I didn't see any damage on the damn car. Why was there no damage on the car when it just ran into it and made this horrendous sound? And then, let, let's be completely honest here, Roman Reigns had dove into the car at that point. It's not like that car was driving that fast. Like, how injured could the motherfucker really be? And then on top of all that, Samoa Joe, in the course of a minute or two, goes from wanting to beat Roman's ass and beat an apology out of him to now Roman's been hit by a fucking car or his car has been hit by another car and now Samoa Joe is soft and sensitive and caring and all this other crap. Bleh. It was cool to see all the Rikishi <laughs> gifts and the Rikishi memes and all this other stuff. The Rikishi clips saying, I did it, I did it, I did it to Father Rock. I did it. <laughs> But it would be cooler if it was one of his sons, like if it was Jimmy Uso, man. Could you imagine if you had Jimmy Uso be like, hey, ma, hey, and they stumble out of the car, oh, what the fuck are you going to say too soon? Well, clearly WWE didn't mind having him wrestle next, last week, so I'll fuck you at one too soon. Hey, Roman, I want a push. We want these cars just like him. I mean, it'd be kind of badass if you really think about it. Like, imagine you just have Jimmy stumbling out of the fucking rental car and there's bottles falling all over the ground. Like, if that wouldn't be must-see TV, I don't know what the fuck would be. Have it be Jimmy Uso that fucking hit him. Why not? 
or even better with his angle because I don't know that they clearly knew where the hell they were going with all this. You know, don't have it be anybody right now. Don't have Roman wrestle Sunday at SummerSlam. Don't have a rush for him to do anything anytime soon. It's just a thought. You know, kind of like you haven't had a rush for the women's tag team championships to appear or do anything whatsoever. We finally got a match where they were being defended and then the Iconics were Im immediately eliminated. <laughs> they were the first team eliminated in this elimination tag match. <laughs> Showed how little they gave a fuck about these ladies. Good Lord Christ Almighty. <laughs> Just so that way Alexa can do weak-looking shit and get a meaningless victory and hooray. Oh, my God. It was really, truly, at this point in time, that I was hoping, begging, and pleading for something to save me with this show. Because there were a couple of cool things, but it was a lot of bad. It was a lot of bad. Especially sad because you're six days away from your biggest show of the summer. You would think you would do better. You would think you would care more. And clearly... Something was amiss here. But oh God. That main event segment. Miz TV. It's the Miz. It's Shawn Michaels. It's the mystery of who's going to wrestle at SummerSlam. And as the fans are hoping and the fans are wishing and the fans are praying because they're dumb. And they want it to be Shawn Michaels. Like, why? I don't know, but it's whatever. That's right, it's Goldberg! And fucking Ziggle, you piece of shit, you're next! Was it worth sitting there and sitting through almost three hours of crap just to get to Goldberg coming out and issuing the challenge of Dolph Ziggler? You goddamn right it was! The only two abortions of this, the shames of this, are number one, that Goldberg did not spear and jackhammer that mid-card piece of crap straight into oblivion! Number two! Is that we're wasting this spot with Goldberg on fucking you, Gaston? <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Now some people are surely going to be upset. And they're surely going to be mad. It's the has-been versus the never-was. Well, you might think Goldberg is a has-been. But at least he's been something and someone at some point. Dolph Ziggler is the fucking never was, the never goddamn will be, and the fact that they are wasting Goldberg on such an irrelevant piece of crap makes me sick to my stomach. And if it's anything other than Goldberg squashing, squashing that rip-off piece of shit on Sunday at SummerSlam, we fucking riot. I imagine the audacity, the gall, the temerity to sit there and think that you want to have... Dolph Ziggler actually beat Goldberg. Give me a goddamn break. It's going to be a long enough show. Give us a squash match. Let Goldberg reign supreme one more time. Because by God, that's what the people want. Woo! only shameful thing about it is you're wasting Goldberg at a big four pay-per-view. Well, fucking Dolph Ziggler. Excuse me. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Unbelievable. My un. Believable.